So Nerd Immersion just released a new video talking about his inner dialogue with rules lawyering at a table that he had very little experience at. And more importantly, he asked the D&D community at large for their opinion on his current situation. So that's what this video is. It's going to be half response, half informational video. Uh, Nerd Immersion, if you're watching this, hi, I like your content quite a bit. And if you can't be bothered to watch this whole video, know that the simple solution generally is that this table isn't for you and you should probably step away. But there is a solution that is outside of that. And if you're interested in hearing that or my reasons for the initial conclusion, uh, stick around. That's what we're going to be getting into. So let's get into it. I want to keep this video short and sweet. So instead of breaking down all the little things that he mentioned in the video, I'm going to talk about the two macro things that he talked about. And that was the power dynamic at tabletop role-playing spaces and the purposes that rules serve in the tabletop role-playing space. The first thing to bring up is the first thing that Nerd Immersion brought up, and that is that there was clearly a power dynamic at play at this table. He talked about how some of them had known each other for a long period of time and had been playing for a long time, how some of them were brothers, and how he was just a newbie that was thrown into the fray of this tabletop space. And that is a very good thing to acknowledge. And I'm really happy that you acknowledge that space because every table is different and everyone's definition of fun is different. And some people just straight up ignore rules and you acknowledge that. You acknowledge that there is a gray area here, but how you felt uncomfortable in the space to speak up mostly because you were the new person. And I think that that was a great choice. When you are going into a new table or a new space or a new game, you don't really know what to expect because every table is different. And if they are having fun, then you would be the odd person out by forcing your own definition of fun onto them. So I think holding back in that instance was definitely the right play. So I think you did great in holding back your criticism. However, there was one thing that you said that did bother me and something that probably you should have called out immediately. And the way that you phrased it makes me think that it might have been a misinterpretation as you didn't say that this person identified themselves that way. Uh, and let me be more specific. You, you said that there was someone at the table that you interpreted as the person that I know everything and I know all of the rules bow down before me. You need to do what I say. And you didn't say that they actually said that, but you just got that impression of them and impressions, especially ones like that, when you were already kind of on the back foot are often wrong to, to, put it nicely and not to call out your character or anything like that. That's just something that we do when we are uncomfortable and we are put on the back foot. We, we feel cornered and when we feel cornered. We like to go out and just bite at psychological aspects of communication and interpreting falsehoods is definitely a part of that. So I really want you to take a step back and think about, did this person actually say that? Or is this just me projecting onto them? And if the answer is that they actually said that, then all bets are off. You need to make your opinions known at that exact moment because D&D is a space that is shared by many different people and that could seriously do a lot of harm because in one case, they are making an ignorant decision and are really wrong about it and they could very, very, very heavily benefit from someone pointing out their flawed philosophy or their flawed perspective. And the other thing, and this is something that would really lend itself to this being a toxic player, is that this person is lying and using their power dominance dominance in the social hierarchy to enforce their opinions of the rules onto other people, whether or not it's true or not. And if that is the case, then that is a problem player and you should dip out ASAP. I don't know these people. So for the sake of this video, I am going to assume that it is the former and that they are just making an honest mistake and that you clearly know how things work better than they do as far as rules as written goes. In short, you could ask for permission from this player and the table at large. You could say, hey, so if there is a rule at play here that is being ruled ruled contrary to how I am familiar with it. Uh, should I bring it up? Do you feel comfortable with me bringing it up? Or should I just wait until after the session? That way you bring your foot forward, you clearly communicate and you do what the table requests of you. And at least at that point, you have communicated clearly, effectively, and the power dynamics at play kind of get pushed aside because you are just making a simple request. You are at the table. You matter just as much as anyone else, even if there is a social hierarchy at play here. You need to let your needs be known and you need to advocate for yourself and be assertive. But you should do it in a way that makes your standing as the new player at the table very present and be respectful and expect to be respected in return. And so long as all of those conditions are met, then 
you're golden. The second thing I wanted to talk about is the function of rules at all in D&D. Why don't we just make shit up and roll dice and assign arbitrary meanings to things? The big reason is a sense of mutual understanding and community. The reason why we have rules for things is to come in and share spaces with a large amount of people. The reason why we have a player's handbook is so that we could go from one table to the next and have a general understanding of what we are going to experience from one table to the next. However, it's just not that simple, as anyone knows. Every table is so different, and this is just an example of this table being different. In this tabletop space, the rules clearly were being altered, and Nerd Immersion was seemingly frustrated by this predicament, because there are many a homebrew rules out there, but from his perspective, it seemed to be fairly arbitrary. So in this case, I would recommend asking for clarification and then making an educated decision based on the answers that the table slash DM gave you after the session was done. So ask them, hey, so about haste, uh, about opportunity attacks, about firebolt melting a lock, all these things kind of bothered me. Is there a rule that I should know about? And if their answer was no, I just like saying yes to things and like enabling the players to do whatever they want. Then that is a signal to you that this isn't the kind of game that you like playing at. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with what that table is doing. And you just need to inform the DM and be like, hey, so if I'm going to continue playing at this game or you want me at this game, I need things to be a little more consistent with rules as written because that's how I enjoy the game. Is that something that you can do or something that you want? to do. If not, then I just won't play at your table and no hard feelings. Thank you for inviting me. People's preferences on what rules should be used differ so wildly that you just need to straight up ask. And that is the overarching theme of this video is that Nerd Immersion was acting so much on initial thoughts and interpretations and meanings from what was happening in the table when what he should be doing is communicating and just straight up asking, advocating for himself. Because there's a difference between saying this is dumb or this is bullshit, which are which is the language that he was kind of using at certain points in the, in the video. Again, nerd immersion if you're watching this, no shade. I'm, I'm honestly just trying to be constructive. And just communicate, ask, hey, so is this what you mean by this? Or hey, I enjoy doing this. Do you think we could take a step back and maybe do something a little more to what I'm familiar with, unless that an X card conversation is brought up, in which case you bring that shit up immediately. But in terms of um, gameplay mechanics and just personal preferences, just communicate. Ask the DM and the table at large, hey, how's everyone feeling about this? Because I'm a little lost. You just need to ask instead of coming to your own conclusions because it's, it's impossible to tell. Just judging by the context of your video, it's really impossible for me to give you good advice because at no point in that video did you say, I asked them this, or they told me that it was all, I interpreted this, or I thought that this meant this, or to me, this form of play leads to this feeling that I feel, which is good, but you should ask some more questions and communicate with the table. So to wrap this video up, if you are playing at a table where your player preferences clearly aren't at the forefront of the table, communicate, try to work something out. And if you can't, then that just means that this ain't the table for you and you should probably move on and no one should take anything personally. And going back to what I said at the start of the video with just saying that this isn't the table for you, this is why, is that if you don't feel comfortable communicating with these people, if you don't know them really well, or if you don't think that honestly, it, is worth the energy investment to work out a way to adjust the table dynamic to a way that you are comfortable with and into a way that you can have fun in, then you can just take a step back and you should step back and just not play at that table in the future because this game is complex and there are plenty of tables that play in the style that you are looking for that are waiting for you. And you should not encroach onto this table's version of fun to better suit your own needs. You should instead either run a game for yourself that more caters to the game that you like to play or keep searching for that game that suits your play style. And that's basically it. I hope that you all got something out of this and Nerd Immersion, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to address this very complicated question. I hope you all got something out of this and Nerd Immersion, I hope you can uh, work this all out and find a table that you can have fun in. And yeah, that's basically it. If you liked what you saw, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Stay happy, stay healthy. You're all fucking awesome. And I hope to see you again very soon. 
Cheers.